Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian from the Association of the United States Army's Annual Conference and Trade Show in Washington, D.C. And we have with us Keith Flail, who is the Global Vice President for Military Business Development at Bell Helicopter. Great seeing you again. Good seeing you again, Vago. Um, it's been uh, it's been busy. You were the project manager of the V280 uh, Valor, uh, the latest iteration of tilt rotors coming from uh, you know purely now from the Bell side without without Boeing. But you guys recently introduced uh, this new system, the V247, uh, the Vigilant. Tell us a little bit about the you know obviously this is for a, a marine requirement, but tell us what are some of the attributes, how large of an aircraft that you're shooting for, and what are the capabilities you want to bring to bear for the Marine Corps. Yeah, so this is the Bell uh, V247 Vigilant. So it is our offering for the Marine Corps' uh, MUX program of record. Uh, indications are that the initial capabilities document for that program is now uh, validated by the JROC. So this is in response to the need for a C-based Group 4, 5 uh, UAS system that addresses seven capability gaps that the Marine Corps has. The intent of this platform is to have that uh, vertical takeoff capability, so you're C-based, with a system that can stow and fold and fit within the DDG hangar, yet have unprecedented uh, range and payload and speed. So what you have here is an asset that can be used for uh, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. It can be used for uh, cargo, for replenishment. You can also weaponize it to take out uh, key targets. So it's really that multi-purpose uh, capability for the, for the Marine Corps uh, for that mission set. Um, what sort of commonality do you have between this platform and, for example, the V-22, which is in extensive service now with the Marine Corps? The greatest amount of commonality with the V-247 really draws back to the V-280, which we are uh, it, you know, well along in the, the, the joint multi-role tech demonstrator effort. So the, the, the amount of reuse that we have of the technology and the experience as we're going through uh, the V-280 build right now is, is really coming over to the V-247 and will allow us to accelerate this capability of the Marine Corps very quickly with a target of being able to hit a milestone C uh, for this unmanned aircraft in 2023, again, leveraging everything from uh, V-280. How um, large of an aircraft we're doing, for example, if you compare it to, say, a V-22, how large of an aircraft is this? Uh, the V-247 is approximately, with the wing extensions uh, folded out, it's about 65 feet wide and it's about 37 feet long. So it's a little bit uh, uh, wider, uh, excuse me, a little bit uh, narrower than, than what the V-280 is, and it's significantly smaller than what the V-22 is. Do, um, and how far along are you in toward moving toward a prototype, and when do you guys think you're gonna start flight testing? The effort is currently in a preliminary design at Bell. Uh, as we've continued the discussions with the Marine Corps to make sure we understand where the requirements are, what they're looking for in terms of speed and range and payload to make sure we have that right. Again, with the initial capabilities document now approved, uh, we're monitoring the Marine Corps progress on the, the capability development document, which will really drill down into the specifics of what those requirements are that we believe we can meet uh, and exceed with the V-247 Vigilant. And, and what do you guys, obviously Northrop and DARPA, as well as uh, General Atomics are in it, one with a modified Reaper, the other one with, with, a, with a, another uh, system, what do you see as being your guys' advantage that you're bringing to the party? When it comes to the, the, the kind of payload you're talking about and the kind of endurance that you need from a system like this, we, we believe nothing can perform that mission like a tilt rotor can. Uh, being able to, again, land on the DDGs, be able to fold up, uh, go into the hangar, and still be able to maintain the aircraft, bring them out, and go to unprecedented ranges and, and stay out for a, for a very long time to keep that endurance. So the name V-247 is really to imply the 24-7 coverage that you get from two systems being able to, to change out and cycle to maintain persistent surveillance on a given area, as an example. That's right, because you're looking at a modular weapons pack packs. Tell us a little bit about the modular concept you're using for the system. So the way the aircraft is configured, the, the bays that are on the bottom, you can either you know carry a variety of weapons on, on there. You could carry uh, different sensors and payloads, depending upon what the mission set is. And you could also put a cargo hook on it if you need to do cargo replenishment. So the intent of this is really a Swiss Army knife type of aircraft that can do a multitude of missions, uh, mission sets for the Marine Corps. And what sort of payload are you looking at? What sort of range are you looking at? And, and what sort of speed are you looking at? Uh, the, the, the speed for the, uh, for the aircraft, it can go over 300 knots. Uh, the max endurance airspeed is around 180 knots if you just want to keep it up and, and loiter. And uh, um, the, the typical cruise range is around 240, pretty close to that 247 uh, naming convention again, similar to the naming convention of the, uh, of the V-280. And, and how much payload and what kind of range? So the payload, the uh, the aircraft itself, the max takeoff 
uh, gross weight for it is about 29,000 pounds. Of that, 13,000 pounds can be payload. So that's you trading off you know, how much fuel do you want, depending upon the mission type and what, what sorts of weapons do you want to carry, or do you want to uh, uh, have an external load because you're doing cargo replenishment, so that you basically have about 13,000 pounds worth of trade space there, depending upon what the mission is. And from a range standpoint, roughly how much range, uh, from an endurance standpoint, right? If you were doing a surveillance mission, for example, like right, typical surveillance mission, how many hours can this aircraft? So with today's engine, today's engine technology, we can stay up for o over 11 hours. If you go to something like a, a fate engine downstream, then you're going to get upwards of 15 hours of endurance. But with current engine technology, we can stay up for 11 hours. Uh, for range, uh, again, it depends on the mission set and what you're carrying, but about 450 nautical mile mission radius. Uh, if you just want to go out um, uh, point to point to take out a target and come back, you can go out 1,500 nautical miles, take out a target and come back. So incredible uh, range and endurance with this, with this asset. And, uh, but just to clarify, it doesn't have a, what you did is you're going to the next generation, so it doesn't have a lot of parts commonality with the V-22. You're shooting for having more parts commonality with the 280. Yes, the, the, the V280 being the most recent development that we're doing. Uh, that program, by the way, is uh, we're about 69% built uh, on the V280 demonstrator that's going to fly in um, September of next year, le actually less than a year from now. Uh, so all the, all the reuse and the technology that comes from the V280 is the basis for the V247. Um, and you were the project manager uh, of that, so it is it is your baby as as you're you're seeing it through. How do you, I mean, obviously it is going to be a very competitive um, phase for the future of the Army contract. Obviously, all eyes are, are, are on that. The Boeing and Sikorsky guys have come up with what they view to be their design, uh, and, and they're uh, testing it out. What do you see, you know, they, they look at that as their, their advantages as being, you know, agility is one of the points that they make. What are the advantages you see of the 280? Uh, the advantages of the V280 are the, the, the fact that you have a, a vertical takeoff aircraft that has the efficiency of a turbo, turboprop airplane. So once you get up into your mission profile and you transition into airplane mode, you're really flying like a turboprop. So you get to ride on the wing, you get all the benefits of riding on the wing, you get that unprecedented uh, range because of the fuel efficiency, you get to slow the rotors down, and you're basically sipping gas as you, uh, as you execute the mission. So that gives you that, that extended range that you can't get out of a typical rotorcraft, is that efficiency. And that speed and that range is what gives you that operational productivity and that access uh, that's necessary for the for the missions you're executing. What about agility? How agile is, for example, a system like the Valor? Well, leveraging the experience from V22 and the agility that it has, uh, we put significant uh, increased rotor flapping into the design of the V280. So from a pitch, roll, and yaw standpoint, both at uh, high speeds and low speed, uh, the, the Valor's going to have incredible agility. Uh, the standard that's out there that's referenced often is the ADS-33 uh, level one handling qualities standard. Uh, as an example, and we'd love to put you in the simulator and show you uh, the latest state of our software development and our control laws, but if you uh, do a pedal turn at a, at a hover in the V280, uh, the, the nose will pass through where the tail was in three seconds. So that's the kind of agility that you have in terms of how quick the aircraft will respond and in some ways uh, maybe um, greater response than what a pilot would even want in terms of uh, how fast you can maneuver. But that gives you that margin in certain weather conditions and such and evasive maneuvers and how the uh, you're going to perform when you're doing actions on the objective and having that low speed agility has been one of the concern areas. And uh, we will show when we fly the V280 that it has incredible agility. And again, you can see it in the simulator right now, which shows the state of the software and the uh, fly-by-wire flight controls that are in development right now. You also have that, for example, in pitch and as well as in power to be able to go on all three axes when it comes to agility? Absolutely. They, the, the pedal example is just one of, one of the examples, but because of that flapping that you have uh, within the two rotor systems, you get incredible agility in all three axes. What do you guys want to achieve You know, as you look downstream with the aircraft? What does the test program look like once you get it up in the air next year? There's a uh, two-year flight test program. So again, first flight, September of 2017, with a two-year flight test program where we'll go into you know, the typical envelope expansion of the, air, of the aircraft, showing the key performance parameters that we're looking at in terms of achieving the speed and the range, and, uh, and showing the high-hot capability and all the things that we uh, signed up for in the, in the joint multi-role effort. And then um, downstream in, into that uh, flight test program, being able to demonstrate some other capabilities uh, like, like fast rope um, and, uh, and and some of the other mission sets from more of a demonstration capability of what it can be operationally. 
And one last question. Everybody is seeking to take cost out of their programs, whether it's on the construction side of things or whether it's on sustainability. What are some of the things that you're doing across your products to take cost out? So we pride ourselves on everything that we've been doing on the joint multi-role effort with the V280 is, is focused on getting cost, weight, and complexity out of the aircraft. Uh, we have the incredible V-22 experience. V-22 is a great machine. Now with over 350,000 flight hours out there, you take all those lessons learned from that, apply it into a clean sheet design with intense focus on using those technologies, but looking at it through the lens of affordability. Anything that goes on the airplane, what are we, what are we doing so that we can fundamentally build the aircraft cheaper? So that, that's been an intense focus for us. And with our government partners that have been with us since day one on the JMR effort, we're able to do that together and provide the proof uh, back to the government to show that we can take significant time out of the acquisition schedule and really accelerate this program and give our warfighters a capability that, you know, get, like, with something that can go twice as fast and twice as far uh, for what, as far as what they do today. Again, expanding that operational productivity and that access that they need. Keith, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Vago. I appreciate it.